now, as investigators work to determine the cause of the helicopter crash which killed the basketball legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, tributes have been pouring in from around the world. Well, Kobe's friend and former Lakers teammate Lamar Odom has described him as a brother uh, and credits Kobe for getting him through his darkest days. And Lamar and his fiancée Sabrina Parr join us now live from Atlanta. Well, good morning to both of you. Uh, Lamar, it must be... You know, for everybody, I was sitting at home, the news broke, and I was utterly shocked. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Kobe. I used to go and watch the Lakers a lot, watched you many times there, loved the experience, realised you were in the presence of sporting greatness with Kobe Bryant. But for you, his friend, his teammate, mm -hmm. somebody who, when you went through dark times, Kobe was there for you, this must be a shattering time. Yeah, it is. It seems um, rather surreal. Um, this feels like a, a long-lasting nightmare. I'm, I'm going to miss him dearly. His tutelage. Um, his strong will. I'm, I'm just blessed that I was able to um, rub shoulders with that man and have a little bit of that uh, magical dust sprinkled off on me. Um, you know, I know I'm feeling really bad, and his fans are. I could just imagine um, how his children and, and his wife and his, his mother and father feel right now. Lamar, listening to you speak, it's as if a part of you has been ripped away. Yeah, I'm, I haven't really f felt um, a pain or a shock like this since, uh, since my son passed away in 2006. Um, Lamar, he was uh, an iconic basketball player, but he was one of those few people that transcended the sport he played and became so much more important to so many people. You know, I wrote a column about him yesterday, mm -hmm. and I went back over his own philosophy about how to compete, how to win, uh, how to deal with pain, all those things. You, you played with him for many years. You won two championships with him. Um, you know him better than most yeah. people. What was it about Kobe Bryant that made him such a great athlete and such a great person? Oh, um, I think his, his will and his willingness to overcome anything. Um, there wasn't um, any pain that could stop him. Or he was always the first one to practice, the last one to leave. Um, just his willingness to put in the work um, at being great. And it, it really rubbed off on, on um, it rubbed off on me. And uh, we were able to win two championships. And I, I, so I'm, I'm thinking that it even rubbed off on the rest of my teammates. Um, he just never stopped. He, he just always kept going. He always wanted, mm -hmm. always wanted more. He talked about sacrifice as being the, the yardstick, really, between very good sports athletes and the great ones. That mm -hmm. you have to, if you want to be great, and I've heard the same thing from Ronaldo. Michael Phelps, the swimmer, from Cristiano Ronaldo, the footballer, that to be mm -hmm. really great, an all-time great, you have to make so many sacrifices. And yet, in Kobe's case, it seemed when he retired that family which had always been really important to him, became something perhaps even more important to him than, than the sport that he loved so much. Yeah, he had the, um, the type of mindset when, when something was taken away from him, he was going to step it up and rev it up in, in different areas of his life. And we just kind of got to um, witness that on, um, on the big stage. I don't expect it to ever be another one like him. Mm. Sabrina, um, I'm just, I'm, mm. 
you're sitting Good there, night. obviously, alongside your fiancé and supporting him. Just describe to us the, the impact Kobe Bryant has on your fiancé and on all basketball mm. fans. I mean, just a legendary, inspiring figure. So, um, it's funny because when Lamar was doing Dancing with the Stars, um, I needed something to motivate him. Uh, it was something he's never done. So, it wasn't natural to him, um, kind of discouraging. And um, so, I actually reached out to Kobe so that he could motivate him. And they ended up using um, a piece of their FaceTime conversation for like the pre-dance headliner that they do for Dancing with the Stars. But um, just to see how he responded to him versus how he w was responding to me, you know, he didn't really say much different, uh, you know, anything different as far as, you know, pushing him. But one thing he did say, um, Lamar, you know, they were FaceTiming and, um, I was just happy he even took the time out to want to get involved and, you know, encourage Lamar. And mm -hmm. the moment Kobe found out Lamar was doing Dancing with the Stars, he texted him and just said, you know, um, go out there and kill it, you know, practice till your legs hurt and then practice some more. So during the time when um, they were conversing, so I was trying to get him motivated, you know, Lamar was like, well, we're practicing four hours a day. And Kobe was like, that's not enough. It needs to be like seven or eight. And he was like, what? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you see, Lamar, you see what I'm saying? So he was like, all right. So after that, you know, um, it went from me having to push Lamar to get up to go to practice to him saying like, oh, I'll see you later. I'm going to get there early. I'm like, wow, practice isn't until another two hours, you know, so just the way that he was able to, you know, get Lamar to respond, which is very impressive. Yeah. What would KB and, do? Um, yeah.